Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another review. Up to date it's a real classic British Railways DMU. So I say today's DMU is a real classic, it's actually much more than that. They say this is the first proper British Railways DMU. It is of course this, the Derby Lightweight. Now I've actually had my Derby Lightweight since 2016 and I did review it back in 2016, but I got to thinking I've changed a lot in that time, my channel's changed a lot. It would be a lot of fun to revisit this and see what I think of it today. Also, Backman have announced that they are going to be re-releasing the Derby Lightweight at some point in the future, and so I thought, why not do it now? That's as good a time as any. Now, before I tell you what Backman's asking price for their upcoming Derby Lightweight is, I thought I would tell you what I paid for mine. So I bought mine from Rails of Sheffield back in 2016 for the very reasonable price of £79.50. And I think, yeah, for a two-card DMU, that's pretty much spot on, isn't it? That's a very, very good price. Now just think about that, for me to have paid £79.50 back when sold that DMU to Rails of Sheffield, presumably at a profit, we don't assume that they're going to be operating at a loss, I don't think that would make much sense. And then of course for Rails to then sell it to me, they too need to make a little bit of a profit. So we've got profit being made there at £79.50. Now according to Rails of Sheffield for the upcoming Bankman Derby Lightweight, the RRP as you can see here is £229.95 with the Rails price being one. What is going on there? That is three times what I paid for this in 2016 and the model's older now. They don't have all of those tooling costs to cover. What is going on? How can it possibly be that expensive? It actually really hurts me to see prices like that. I know that sounds stupid and melodramatic but seriously there are people out there who might not have an awful lot of money and prices like that simply exclude them. And the fact that this has been for sale for a third of that price in the past just demonstrates to me that prices like that are not necessary. Come on, Backman, please have a little bit of compassion for your customers. It's just too much money. And I find myself asking what possible increase in production costs could justify such a massive increase over just four years. No idea whatsoever. Nonetheless, very high expectations. I only paid 80 quid for this, so I thought it was a bit of a budget model. Not anymore, of course. So let's get this out. Let's see what it's like. It is a good model, if I remember correctly, and it damn well better be for the price these days. Okay, let's find out. So the Derby Lightweight, yes, as you can see through the front of the box, mine is a two-car set. In real life, I think they would have been in formations of up to four, although many of them were two-car sets. I'm not sure if Backman had done a four-car set. Now, from what I remember of this model, the model is really, really good. So while I do take issue with the price, I'm not going to be claiming in today's video that the model is in any way poor. From what I remember, it is an absolutely fantastic model. You do get a great model for what you pay. Let me show you the end of the box then. So the product code for my version is 32-515A, Derby Lightweight, two-car DMU, BR Green with yellow warning panel. And as you can see, this is for eight pin DCC and six pin. I think the six pin must be for the non-driven trailer and presumably the eight pin goes in the loco. I can't remember to be honest with you, but we'll check the instructions in just a second. And if I show you the back of the box, you can see we do have a brief history of the Derby Lightweight there. Feel free to pause and read that if you'd like to, as always, but I will give you a little history on the class in a little while. For now though, let's get this out and rediscover what you actually get for your 200 pounds. Although perhaps that's a little unfair. Maybe Backman have done loads of updates on this for the latest release. I haven't read about anything like that. I think it is just a re-release of the same thing here, but it is possible that they've updated it in some way. Although as we're going to see, that's probably not that necessary because they are excellent, I have to say. Okay, so we have some paperwork inside the box. So let me show you some of this. So first of all, we have some general information. It's a bit of an operation guide so you can see a little bit about body removal which is of course important with this loco if you're going to fit it with DCC and indeed we do have a lot about DCC fitting controlling it and also fitting some buffer beam detail which is great on the back of there you can see the exploded diagram which shows a little bit about the insides of the model we do just have one driven bogey which is fair enough obviously it's more than powerful enough to move itself and the trailer 
but ultimately the expense of driving two bogies has been avoided because only one's driven. But certainly for the £79 I paid, I certainly wasn't concerned about that. The other piece of paper is just about warranty. So I believe this one here, yeah, this one's slightly heavier, so I think that is the powered car. So I think we'll take that one out first and take a look. So it comes in its own package, which is really, really nice. I know with some of Hornby's train packs, they all just come in the same box, uh, which doesn't always do a great job of protecting the loco and the contents. These are really, really nice. I do like the separate packaging there. Okay, so I will pull out the loco. Nothing else in terms of paperwork inside the box. So I think we've seen all there is to see in terms of paperwork. Let's slide off the outer sleeve then. We do have some details in a bag. Now, the instructions did mention the buffer beam detail, so there is that. Yet, as you can see, we've got some screw link couplings there and also some vacuum fittings, so if you wanted to, you could fit those. I didn't see in my cursory glance of the instructions any explanation as to what these are. They look like little etched pieces. In fact, this is a resealable bag, so I could open this and find out exactly what it is. Yeah, I didn't see anything about these on the instructions. Oh, they're just blank. Yeah, I'm not sure about those. Yeah, it just says tablet catcher pads. Okay, fair enough. Well, I, I wouldn't know what to do with those, unfortunately. Uh, I will have to double check the instructions, but I certainly didn't see anything about those uh, written down. So, yeah, your guess is as good as mine. Let me know in the comments if you know. I know a lot of you guys are much more knowledgeable than I am, so no doubt we'll have answers very quickly. And let's lift this thing out. And as you can see straight away, this thing is absolutely beautiful. Expensive, yes. To an extent, you do get what you pay for. Whether the model justifies 200 quid is another matter. Uh, I will leave that one up to you. In fact, I'll put a poll up later on so that you can let me know. But it does feel pretty heavy, it must be said, and the level of detail is quite obviously very, very impressive from a quick glance here. And I will show you more on this in just a second. And of course, I'll weigh it as well to give you an idea of what it weighs. Of course, that was the motor unit, but we also have the non-driven car here, which is just the same. Well, it's not actually the same, no. It's slightly different, of course, uh, but it doesn't have the driving mechanism on board, although it does have full pickups because this unit does have directional lighting and it also has interior lighting, uh, which is reasonably effective from what I remember, which is really cool. Okay, let's take the packaging apart then and have a look at this one. Now, obviously, this is noticeably lighter because it doesn't have the drive mechanism on the inside. But as you can tell, the level of detail is just as good, really. The finish, as you can tell, is just phenomenal, isn't it? It really, really is impressive. So there we go. Let me hold these together. As you can see, what a beautiful set this really is. So I will give you a little history on the Derby Lightweights. And after that, we will take a close look and see what it's all about. Introduced in 1954, the Derby Lightweight would be the first British Railways class of DMU. 217 vehicles were built over two years at BR Derby Works as a mixture of two and four car sets. The Lightweights were instrumental in replacing steam locomotives on passenger services due to their literal lightweight, which led to much greater efficiency. In 1956, for example, 800,000 more passengers were carried by these units alone than by the entire steam fleet at the time, which is quite astonishing. They were also complete with many modern comforts, including modern interiors, quality seating, 24-volt electric lights, which were actually powered by belt-driven dynamos, and oil-fired heating. Despite their massive success, the Derby Lightweights didn't last dreadfully long in service. They didn't conform to the standards that later BR DMUs did, and therefore it was more cost effective to just replace the units rather than to continue maintaining them. By 1969, very sadly, all of the units had been withdrawn, and it's not very long at all, is it? It's 15 years, literally. Although to date, two sets have been preserved, so it's not all bad news. So there it is then, the driving car of the Derby Lightweight DMU, up close and personal for you. And when you start looking up close, it does become quite easy to see why this would be an expensive model. Now, I'm not going to start saying I think this is worth £200 or more. Ultimately, I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. I'll put up a poll later on so that you guys can pick what the most you would pay for this would be. However, I will concede that the price I paid, less than £80, does seem unusually cheap by modern standards, which is a shame. It's a shame we don't have more reasonable pricings these days, but it just seems to be a fact of life, unfortunately. But yes, the detail and quality is pretty much amazing on these locos. The weight is pretty good due to its die-cast chassis, and there is a die-cast sort of chassis that runs under the whole loco, which gives it a lot of its weight. It weighs in at 340 grams. It's much heavier than the non-driven car, which weighs in at just 136 grams. 
It is, however, lighter than some other modern DMUs that I own. Uh, for example, it's 56 grams lighter than this, the Great Western rail car from Dapple. That was a single car unit. And in fact, it's 290 grams lighter than this, the Helgen 128. In fact, the Helgen 128 is considerably heavier than both Derby lightweight cars put together, which is quite something. Anyway, let's not talk about other models though, let's talk about this. So let's talk about the decoration first of all. So you've got these beautiful yellow or creamy stripes applied really, really nicely. I will go in as close as my lens will allow and you can see just how perfectly that is applied. And the same thing goes with all of the decoration really. It's very, very impressive, even though it's a few years old now. You've got the running number really nicely applied, a little bit about the loading down there, just fantastic. You've got the British Railways crest on the side. What a beauty that is, very, very nicely applied. And then you've got some small details which have been picked out. I suppose the impressive ones are the door handles there, which are very nice. You have the window framework here, which has been picked out in a silver paint. It is just painted onto the glazing, I believe, but it looks really, really good. And the windows are very impressive. You can see what we have those little, I'm assuming those will be no smoking signs. Hopefully the camera will pick that up. The decoration is absolutely wonderful. I suppose the cab detail is part of the decoration as well, so I will show you that. Look, we actually have painted cab detail. They're certainly not palming off a basic model on you for your 200 quid, that is for sure. The detail is pretty phenomenal as well. We'll start with the bogey detail. As you can see, there's a lot to see there, and we do have what I believe are separately fitted metal steps on there, which are really, really nice. And as you can see, the molded detail on the bogies there is very, very impressive as is the underframe detail. We have quite a few separately fitted parts there. And in fact, this is true of both units. There are a lot of details represented underneath. More on this car though, because obviously this is the motor car as it would be in real life. Up on the roof, look at this. We have all of this separately fitted wiring up on top. I believe it is all separately fitted. If you get down low, you can see the gaps between it and the loco body, which is just amazing. Really, really impressive level of detail. The glazing on the windows is done very nicely as well. There's just something about it that looks really realistic. The way it refracts the light is just like in real life. I do love that effect. It's very impressive. The interior, at least where the passengers are concerned, is relatively basic, but it is reasonable, I would say. And one thing of note is that the floor seems to be at a realistic level in this loco, unlike, let's say, the Dapple 121 bubble car, which was very unrealistic as a result of the driving shafts which ran underneath the floor. This loco doesn't have anything like that, although it does have a very big bulky motor unit at the back here, as you can tell, which does make the interior of at least the back portion very unrealistic looking. I would say more modern locos, particularly ones that cost 200 pounds, would have a bit more finesse where that's concerned. But as far as I can tell, that's the only downside really. Okay, let's take a look at the back then. As you can see, we have much more painted detail. We have this lovely join between the two coaches, which isn't rubberized or anything. It is just plastic, I think, but it looks pretty decent, doesn't it? We have the sort of European hook and loop type coupling, which is strange. It is fitted into a NEM pocket, and that's the way they connect the two halves of the DMU together, uh, which I suppose is a little bit more subtle than the NEM tension lock on the front end. It's just hilarious that we've got two different types of coupling fitted to one model here. I guess that's Backman's admission of how unrealistic these tension locks are. However, they've stuck with it just because I presume people would kick off if they didn't. One thing that does confuse me slightly given the high price of these is the lack of sprung buffers. Now, for me, having paid about 70, 80 quid for this, I'm not gonna to complain too much. However, I would expect and I would hope that for 200 or 230 quid, they would have improved that particular feature, but we will see. If you get one of these in the future, do pop back to this video and let me know whether that's the case or not. Now, looking at the cab end, there is just a phenomenal amount of detail. So we have the destination just applied. It looks like it's just applied to the front piece of glazing there, which means it's probably not gonna be that easy to change. Although perhaps there is an easy way to do that that I'm not aware of, but to me, it looks like it is just part of the glazing. We do have this separately fitted wiper in front of where the driver would go. That's such a fine piece. It just looks wonderful. And then of course, we've got these very lovely looking lights, which do work. They are genuine lights. There are LEDs behind those holes, which is really quite impressive. So yeah, I mean, the level of detail is absolutely wonderful, very much so, probably one of the best DMUs that I own. Would I pay 200 pounds for it? I think not, you know, knowing that I've paid 79 in the past. 
I wouldn't want to triple that for any reason particularly, but as you can see, it is a very, very impressive unit. Now, the non-driven car, here it is, as you can see, isn't very much different, so I'm not going to spend an awful lot of time on it, but I will just show you one or two close-ups of some of the differences just to give you an idea of what those might be. So the interior is much better on these, I would say, because there's no bulky motor unit installed into this unit. We have the realistic interior going right through, including this first-class compartment, which, as you can see, has slightly different coloured seats inside, which is really cool to see. A lot of the details are very similar, no sprung buffers, painted cabs, beautifully painted cabs. The roof detail is slightly different. As you can see, we have a smaller amount of wiring installed onto this one, which presumably would be different in real life as well. But of course it would. They're not just making these things up, are they? And as well, the underframe detail is a little bit more basic as well. I should also say that the chassis of this unit is not made of metal. I believe this is plastic. It's more like a coach with lights in, really. And it is quite a lot lighter, as I said earlier on. It weighs 130 grams. It's less than half of what the other weighed, so it is noticeably different. Otherwise, though, the level of detail, the decoration, all of that good stuff is very much similar. And as you can see, it looks absolutely beautiful. So with that, let's talk about the mechanism. Let's get it down onto the track, give it a little bit of a run, and I'll come up with some ratings. And you can let me know what you would pay for this. So there she is then, the Derby Lightweight down onto the track and coupled together. It just looks fantastic, doesn't it? Expensive or not, it does look a wonderful, wonderful little set does this. Now the mechanism is really quite good, it must be said. Uh, Backman mechanisms, especially where diesels are concerned, or in fact mainly where diesels and electrics are concerned, the mechanisms are just top notch. So obviously we do only have one driven bogey, that's this one here, you can quite clearly see where that is due to the interior looking a little bit dodgy around that area. But quite obviously, the fact that this is only a two-car set means that one driven bogey is more than sufficient to power this. And in fact, even if you found a way to increase the number of cars up to four, which would be the real-life maximum, I think, you'd still have more than enough power to do that. The pulling power of this is 0.32 newtons, which should be enough to haul around 21 coaches on straight level track, which is absolutely fine. Due to the fact that both units have lighting, we do also have pickups in the non-driven car as well, although there is no electrical connection between the two units, which means that they don't help each other out where pickups are concerned. And also, if you decide to fit them with DCC, you need separate decoders, which obviously makes that process very expensive as well. However, reliability is not much of a problem because, as I say, both units do have all-wheel pickup. Now, the way the picking up is done is a little bit unconventional I suppose. It's done through the axles as you can see here which means that the bulk of the axles are made of plastic unfortunately and as you can see mine's only four years old but it's already started to split there. I don't like plastic axles, they're unreliable so perhaps more traditional pickups would have worked better. The actual motor bogey itself is reasonably good quality as well. We've got proper metal bearings on the wheel set which means that that's really good and smooth. We've got a nice big flywheel attached to the shaft of the motor. The only thing I'm not certain of is whether this uses a three or a five poor motor. On the listings I've been looking at none of them have specified and I don't really want to open up the motor to find out because I might not be able to get it back together again. My hunch is that it's a three pole motor inside there because most of Backman's locos use three pole motors but obviously it's going to get the benefit of the doubt because I can't mark a loco down based on a hunch or a gut instinct. So with that let's give this a little try, let's see how it runs and I will try and show you the lights as well. So I'll set this forwards and we will have a go. Let's see if it will crawl. It has been running, I should say. I've had this for a few years now, so it has definitely been running. And mm, the crawl isn't the best. <laughs> I think that's about as slow as it goes. Let's set it into reverse. Very gently turn it up. Very, very gently. Okay, it was better that time. Maybe I was just a bit more controlled, oh, although it did stop. So it's going now. As you can see, it is very, very slow, so the control there is excellent. However, it's not particularly smooth, and I would say, let's speed it up, I would say you have to be going about that speed for it to be smooth. So I think it's fair to say that I have other Locos and even other DMUs which do a better slow speed. However, anything above a crawl, the smoothness is absolutely fantastic. It really, really is. Now, if I speed it up a little bit, you'll hear that it's a little bit flatulent in reverse. Mine's been like that for a long time. Uh, I don't think it was like that brand new, but after I'd run it in, I noticed that's the noise you get in reverse, which is strange because in forwards, it's perfect, really, really perfect. But for some reason, something just resonates inside and creates that vibration, which is strange. 
As I'm sure you can tell though, the lighting is absolutely phenomenal. In fact, even with all the bright lights on in here, you can probably see the interior lights working. Um, if not, I will probably just cut out the lights to show you that. Also, the directional lights on the front and back are absolutely fantastic. As you can see, we've got the red tail light there, which shows up when the loco is going away from you. And then you've got the front lights there, the cool white. I don't know if they'd be cool white in real life, would they? It'd be lamps in those days, incandescent ones, probably. Um, but either way, they're very, very good and bright. I do like bright LEDs. They might not be all that realistic, but at least you can see them. Right, let's dip the lights then so I can show you the interior lights. Okay, night has fallen. Let's give this a try. Hopefully you can see that. To my eyes, that's very noticeable. Maybe it doesn't really look it on camera, but I promise you, you can see that the lights are working. And it's features like these that are good justifications for high price tags. I mean, we've got light strips in both of these units, not just one, of course. Yeah, that must have been fairly expensive to produce. It must be said, though, that there's no smoothing capacitors or anything on board. So if I just take off the motor bogey and I put the trailer onto full power, oh, that's a bit better. You can see that, can't you, if I put it over there. If I cut it off on the controller, you see that it drops dead. If there was a capacitor, you'd see a gradual decay in the brightness. It's not the case with these. So you will see flickering over points and things, unfortunately, uh, unless the pickups are absolutely clean and mine seem to be. Oh, got a bit of a, yeah, there we are, look. That's how you make it flicker. <laughs> All right, lights back on then, let's get this thing going. Okay, set it to forwards then. I'm not gonna go too fast because it's nice to observe these things at a slower speed. So there we go, that's 30% which does seem rather speedy actually so perhaps after all it is a gearing issue which prevents the slow crawl from being that impressive either way i have another backman dmu here it's very similar actually although it is in a br blue and gray i believe this is the 108 if memory serves correctly although my memory for dmus is poor unfortunately either way very similar similar sort of price as well although i did once again pay less than 100 i believe for that and then on the inside line, I've got a single car DMU. Uh, this is the 128, I think it is. Again, is it? I think it is the 128, isn't it? I could be wrong. I'm terrible. I apologise. <laughs> Either way, enjoy the running session. See which other DMUs you can spot. And there is one red herring, one loco that is not a DMU. So see if you can spot that. Okay, let's watch it go. So in my opinion, what was once a very affordable and beautiful model has now become a very expensive and beautiful model. In some ways, it does justify a high price tag, I must say. It runs beautifully, it looks fantastic, the lighting is phenomenal. Everything seems to be really, really good about this. So, at the end of the day, you can't complain too much about the price. Although, as I keep suggesting, I don't think £200 is that reasonable, given what other manufacturers are putting out at the moment. But I have to say, you know, as a reviewer who tries to be fair, this Loco does pack in quite a few features. I don't think anyone could deny that. there looking lovely yeah I would say the lightweight has to be one of my favorites uh, it's just very lovely isn't it and of course I am a, a lover of older more vintage locomotives so in my opinion you can't beat the first ever DMU on British Railways can you not really So here are my ratings then for the lovely Backman Derby Lightweight DMU. The level of detail I've given four and a half star. Generally speaking, the level of detail is super, super impressive. Particularly impressive is the cab detail, the detailing on the roof and the lighting, which has to be some of the best lighting I've ever seen. It's not overpowering, but it's bright enough so that you can actually see it, which I feel is always quite the bonus where lighting's concerned. They did fail to completely pull out all of the stops though, it didn't have any sprung buffers and the accuracy of the interior unfortunately has been compromised, at least on the driven car, due to the size of the motor bogey, which is very visible through the windows, a bit of a shame about that. The performance then I've also given four star, generally the performance is absolutely awesome, you've got that lovely flywheel, it runs so smoothly and quietly, it does make a funny noise in reverse and mine's done that I've noticed from within a few weeks of me owning it really, it's quite odd that. The performance otherwise though is excellent, the crawl isn't fantastic, I have to dock a little bit of a mark off that because the slow crawl obviously we've seen better with the locos, but generally yep, the performance is really really good. 
the pulling power has to get the highest mark possible because I measured 0.32 newtons which is the equivalent of around 21 coaches on straight and level track even with the largest realistic formation of derby lightweight we're only talking three coaches in addition to the driving coach itself so the pulling power is not a problem whatsoever it's more than sufficient for anything you could possibly want to do with this at least realistically speaking the mechanism then I've given just a four star. The only thing I didn't really like about the mechanism is the method of picking up. While it does seem to work very reliably, it's very difficult to service and does require cleaning, which isn't all that easy as you have to take the wheels out in order to do that. It also only has one driven bogey, which isn't a problem in terms of pulling power, but it would have been nice to see a few extra driving wheels as we do with uh, say Dapples, DMUs or something like that. The quality then I've given four star, generally speaking the quality is really really good. There's a lot of die cast metal work, particularly once again on the driven car and the assembly, build quality, decoration, all absolutely fantastic. The one thing I don't like about the quality is the plastic axles because they do have a tendency to fail. And as you've already seen, mine have already started to crack. Plastic axles is a no-no, don't think that should be done. Value for money then, now as you know mine was £79.50 but if I took that score and rated the logo on that it wouldn't be particularly helpful to any of you guys because you can't buy them for that anymore. The current RRP of £229.95 or the retailer price of £195.46 to me sounds very unreasonable. Now I have to say I don't know whether they've made any updates on this. I can't see what possible updates would justify three times the price but it is possible, I'm just saying this to be fair and cover myself, it is possible that they've made some updates. If you know of any please let me know. I have to give it two star though. Unfortunately while it is highly detailed and while it is reasonable that the price should be reasonably high, I would have said £150-£160 is about what I would pay for this. £195.46 seems too much. Now that you've seen the logo though, let me know what is the most you would pay for this. I'll put in a range of prices. Overall then, that is 7.63 out of 10. That's a very reasonable score. Would have been much better, I think, if the RRP and the current price was a little bit more reasonable. Into the logbook it goes there, and there we go, 13th, just above the Hornby mixed traffic train set, and below the Hornby rust and shunter. Overall, not too bad at all, I would say. I must say though, it's such a pleasurable loco to run. No problem at all, no derailments, beautiful smooth performance beyond a crawl. The flywheel makes sure of that of course. Nice and quiet, <laughs> unless you reverse it. I don't know, do they all make that rumbling noise in reverse? I think my 108 has been doing that as well, um, but it's not so bad. Uh, in fact, I serviced the 108 a few weeks ago and it was grumbling before the service. Afterwards, it wasn't, but we'll see. Maybe the Derby Lightweight does just need a service. Look at those lights. Great, great lights on this set. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. I will put up an extra poll so that you guys can rate this Loco out of five. Yeah, I would give this a solid three to four out of five. Yeah, definitely, probably four. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? I think if it was better value, it would have been much better overall in my score but you guys let me know what you think for now though thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed that one thank you for your company and uh, yeah if you enjoyed dmus hopefully that will satisfy you for a little while all right thanks for watching see you next time folks you take care